begin the broadcast with big news that we're tracking as far as the phase one of polls in Jammu and Kashmir that concluded. Let's take you through the big voter turnout percentage because 61.11% voter turnout in phase one. The highest turnout was seen in Kishtwar. Let's tell you Kishtwar recorded 80.14%. And while we're talking about the least turnout, it happens to be in Pulwama. In fact, the numbers indicating that 46.65% voter turnout. This is, of course, in the phase one of the polls and the phase two polling on September 25th. Pradeep Datta, my colleague, joins me for more. Pradeep, very good morning. We just gave a quick takeaway of where these numbers stand but as far as you know these key polls of phase one that took place and these numbers that were breaking down tell us more all i can say that this is the victory of a democracy in jammu and kashmir and also a tight slap on the face of those who had been portraying a very gloomy picture of kashmir especially after abrogation of article 370 there were political parties who were saying that there will be no one to hold tricolor there will need to complete alienation and similar kind of a Theory was even propagated by our neighbor Pakistan. But nothing of that sort has happened. We saw that in, uh, during Lok Sabha election, there was a bumper turnout. And this time, a record has been created. After 35 years, we have seen that it is almost 60%. And some of the places, it was more than 75 to 80%. So that is something which was never witnessed before. It clearly indicates the people of Jammu and Kashmir have once again kept their trust with democracy. And they believe in democracy. And they have rejected terrorism and separatism. So that the alienation lobby has also been shown the door. They have also uh, uh, rejected that uh, boycott lobby also who often used to tell people to refrain from coming out and uh, taking part in the democratic process. That's clearly indicate that people are here for the democracy. They want there should be development and they want their kind, should be a kind of a dialogue between them and the leaders at the helm of the fear. So that's what actually they're looking for, the three-dimensional approach. And we have seen that uh, women in large number came out. That's really important. Because in Kishwar area, the women in large number came out to vote. They even outnumbered the men uh, voters in that region. Not only that, 102-year-old women were seen voting in Kishwar. That shows uh, that how much uh, uh, they have uh, respect for the democracy and uh, how much they believe in the democratic process. Because all these years, because of the terror-related activities, they were not able to come out. This is the change what actually we have seen after application of Article 370, who have been questioning what has really changed after application of Article 370. This has changed because this has not only changed the scenario and the situation on the ground, because we have seen terror-related activities have almost come to sketchy court in many of the areas where there used to be often stone pelting. And there, um, a number of youngsters joining terror act has also decreased. And also we have seen that there is right. no more fear. Sadeep, as you point movement. out, what has really changed essentially before the abrogation of Article 370 and now these numbers coming through. But a quick word on the fact that Prime Minister Modi is also going to be in the region today. In fact, he's also put out a social media post saying that how he is going to be addressing a rally in Srinagar as well as Katra. But what more can one expect from that today? See, it's a very important and significant visit. Just uh, the second phase of the polling is to begin on 25th. Uh, and, and before that, he's coming over mm. to Katra as well. Uh, to Kashmir Valley, and when he'll be addressing in Kashmir Valley, large number of people are expected to be there because he's the only prime minister till date who had been coming off and on to Jammu and Kashmir. He's not someone who will be coming only uh, during the election time and asking for the vote because whenever there was a calamity, whenever there is anything, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is always there for the people of Jammu and Kashmir. We saw him uh, during the floods also in 2014. Uh, we saw him after that also coming and celebrating Diwali with the uh, soldiers there on the ground, then addressing people there also. So he has got a great love and affection for the people in Jammu and Kashmir. So nobody can point a finger that uh, now elections are out of the corner and all of a sudden the prime minister is coming out of this place. So he often on keeps on coming. So it, he has been able to strike an emotional chord because from day one, they have made it clear that one, they should, um, they are trying to create a kind of a new leadership in Jammu and Kashmir and because for the last several decades, it was only the dynastic politics and few dynasties we were calling the shots. So what prime minister last time also said that they have tried to create, encourage young leadership so that they should take the man of uh, this Jammu and Kashmir in their hand and sure uh, to script a new chapter in this uh, region because there had been people who had only been playing the South separatism card to stay in power. So he was trying to hit out at the Muftis and Abdullahs. And again today he's expected to uh, speak almost along those lines and also he'll try to showcase what actually the government has achieved in all these years after application of Article 370 and how they are going to further draw a roadmap and they will uh, want to ensure the 
better future for youngsters because you will be trying to address the youngest time because often they have said no talks with Pakistan, no dialogue with separatists. The only dialogue will be with the youth of this region because they are the real stakeholders. So he'll be trying to address them. So it will be very important in Kashmir. And then after that, he's coming over to Qatar region also. That's going to be again hot belt where he will be interacting with the people and trying to ensure that what they are going to do for the Jammu region because at the end of the day, maximum of the seats they had been getting from the Jammu because in 2014 election, 10 years back, they had got the 25 seats and uh, uh, one of the independent would also join them. They got total number of 26. Them. All the seats were from the Jammu region. So his visit will be significant in Kashmir Valley. Will the BJP will be able to open account this time in Kashmir Valley? Will they get seat? Now it's to be seen. But so far as Prime Minister is concerned, definitely he's going to showcase the development project they have undertaken because it was during their tenure and they got to all India Institute of Medical Sciences. They got IM and other facilities. And we have already right, seen Pradeep. that how the road has been laid from one part to the other part. Right, Pradeep, I'd have to interject you there for the moment. But thank you very much for joining us on both those aspects, not only in the terms of the numbers that we've looked at, but this essential uh, key visit of uh, the Prime Minister as well today. Having said that, we're shifting our focus.